Hello everybody and welcome back to my wonderful shop. I have another treat for you guys. I purchased this bad boy. Thought I would do a quick unboxing. Comes with the instruction manual. You know what file that's going to go into. Comes with a charger. Comes with a massive 9 amp hour battery. And the saw comes with a scabbard or a blade protector. And there it is. A little disappointed. This says 1220 volt charger and it's a 60 volt battery, the flex bolt. I was thinking this would have come with a bigger charger with a fan in it. Battery out of the box, comes out one bar, tells you to remove this before use, which I think is good advice. I'm pretty sure you can't use it if you don't remove it. Okay, so I have this plugged in and we engage and I guess it's working. See how long this is going to take. So while this is charging up, I just thought I'd comment at first glance I'm a little disappointed that this Jigunda battery didn't come with this charger. I don't know if this one is still made or what the story is, but this one is obviously a little bigger than this one, and this has a fan in it. So my suspicion without knowing the details is that something like this can charge a battery faster, particularly a high capacity battery. The bar oil goes in this port here and people report on various videos that this leaks making a bit of a mess and they recommend fitting an o-ring on this lip here and there seems to be a bit of a rubberized something down here so I'm gonna give that a shot to see if I have one and there's a sight area here of translucent plastic presumably to help you know when you're running low on oil. I'm a little leery that this pocket here is enclosed. I'm wondering if uh, greasy dirty sawdust isn't going to get down in there making it difficult to clean. Time will tell on that. And the uh, safety switch is here with the trigger here. I have this size o-ring seems a little small but I'm thinking I'm going to be able to get that on so maybe this is a good size. Well I had to go off camera to get that up into that groove and let's see how that behaves. Kind of stiff but it went in. I think what I'm going to do is rub this with a little silicone for good measure. I don't think the silicone will last but once you start getting oil in here I think the oil Obviously, act as a lubricant. Let's see. And it seems to go in, and hopefully, knock on wood, it won't leak. On this side of the chainsaw, we have these two cryptic icons. This is the, uh, I had to look it up, the blade tensioner, meaning how much tension is on the blade. I'm assuming minus means more looser, and plus means more tighter. So let's try loosening it. And I guess that seems pretty loose. And now if we go to tighten, yeah, I can see it pulling in. Okay, and this is to get at the bar itself. Be able to change the bar and chain. And this comes off like so. And if you loosen this, looks like that's just sitting there like so. Okay. I've seen other people comment that this is a standard bar by other manufacturer and that there are other chains that may be a better option for cutting than the one that comes with the saw. But uh, I don't think I'm going to start experimenting that down, down that road anytime soon. I guess it's nice you don't need tools for this, assuming that they're tough enough to put up with the use being outdoors and cutting wood. I guess 
this has a clutch on it and I'm assuming there's a port up here to put grease into like other bars I just So to adjust the tension on the chain, the bar has to be loosened and you get the camming, I'm assuming it's from a brushless DC motor which kind of makes it hard to uh, move the chain by hand. I think I just gave myself a little jab there, so that's a little different than a gas powered saw. Well, it's been a couple hours and I was not closely watching the battery, so I am not sure when it finished charging. Battery goes in, but that doesn't click in, you kind of have to force it in. And let's try not to cut anything significant off. And there she is. Seems to be a little grease in that port. I'm just going to load it up with a little more. And it's already coming out that end. And I'm going to fill this port with bar and chain oil. And I'm going to set this up and leave it there and I'm going to see if it leaks. Put a towel under it. So the good news is I've owned this chainsaw for a couple months now and it doesn't seem to have leaked a single drop of oil. I've only used it a few times. It's been light duty use and it's worked great. It's really convenient just grabbing the saw and going, not having to worry about gasoline and whatnot. But I haven't had the chance to really use it uh, the way I would normally use a gas chainsaw. But there are plenty of other people out there that have exercised these machines and give you a better idea of how well they perform beyond light duty use. So that's all I got for now. Hope you appreciate it. As always, if you got something out of this, please like, subscribe. You know, it always helps. Leave a comment. You know, I love to read them. And as always, check me out on the next one.